Chag Sameach. This is Mordechai Becher with the Gateways Parsha vlog. And I'd like to speak about the traditional Hanukkah food, the oldest traditional Hanukkah food, which in the 15th and 16th century, we have records in Istanbul and in Italy that it was ricotta cheese pancakes. Ricotta cheese made into pancakes, eggs and flour, etc., and fried in olive oil. Sounds amazing, delicious. I have had it. It's fantastic. That eventually evolved amongst Eastern European Jews into latkes because A, most of us were poor, potatoes were cheap, and we didn't have olive oil, but we did have chicken schmaltz, chicken fat, and you can't fry cheese in chicken fat. That would be prohibited. And so therefore, latkes. But the original food, the ricotta cheese pancakes, and it's actually mentioned in Ramosha Isolus, and it's actually mentioned much earlier in the writings of Rabbeinu Nisim, one of the medieval scholars of Spain, who writes that we eat dairy food on Hanukkah. Why? And the standard explanation, which is given by Rabbeinu Nisim, is, is to commemorate the heroism of Yehudit, sister of the Maccabees, who was taken to Holofernes, the Greek ruler, first night of her wedding, was the Greek custom, and she uh, gave him cheese, she gave him wine, and eventually cut off his head. Uh, apparently illegal in Greece at the time. And that was one of the things that sparked off the revolt. And hence, in commemoration of her heroism, we actually eat cheese. And that would be one explanation. But Rav Avram Yeshua Heschel of Opta, known as the Opta Rav, in his book Oyev Yisroel, tells us that the reason for cheese is very different. He says, the other time we eat cheese is on, when do we eat milchiks? We eat cheese when? What, Yontif? Yes, um, Sha Shav oh, on Shavuos. Shavuos. Right, Shavuos. Why? Because, the, I don't know. The Torah. The Torah was given on, right? We got the Torah on Shavuos and we eat dairy food. Why do we eat dairy food then? There are different explanations of it. Um, some say because the only thing we could competently prepare once we found out all the laws of Kashrus, which was in one shot, very difficult to do anything else. Others say because milk represents harmony. It represents a food that requires life in order to give it, as opposed to meat, which requires the death of the animal. Milk requires the life of the animal. And so Torah, life, harmony, and it's also compared to, in the book of Mishle, Devash v'chalav tachas ashoincha, which means milk and honey under your tongue, because the Torah is so sweet. It's like milk and honey together. Do you like milk and honey together? Yes, so do I. So that's why we eat on Shavuot. So the Ovi Yisrael says, Hanukkah is also a time of receiving Torah. What Torah do we receive on Hanukkah? What we call Torah Shabalpeh, the oral Torah, the unwritten Torah. Of course, nowadays it is written down, but for centuries, for over a thousand years, the Torah was not written down. Where on paper, but where was it written? On the hearts and minds of the Jewish people. And that is something which Hanukkah teaches us, that no matter how distant Jews are from Judaism, no matter how assimilated a Jew may be, no matter how influenced by foreign Greek, Syrian, Seleucid, Ptolemaic culture that Jew is, they still have Torah inscribed on their hearts and minds. And our job is to find within each of us and every single Jew that level of pure oil, the little flask of pure Torah oil, which is in the hearts and minds of every one of the Jewish people. And hence, that's why we have Milchik's dairy food on Hanukkah. Have a Chag Sameach. What do you want to say to people? You want to say Chag Sameach? Chag Sameach. It's my granddaughter from Israel. Right, Chag Sameach. Thank you.